We've been interested in the walking imbalance problems that people with Parkinson's disease experience for several years and had been studying it in the lab. And then I had a graduate student, Madeline Hackney, come to work with me who had experience as a professional dancer. So we had the right combination of skills and patient population to implement this after seeing an abstract at a Society for Neuroscience meeting where they had compared tango to walking for exercise in a group of older people without Parkinson's disease who were at risk for falls. And that poster showed that the tango was superior to walking, so we decided to try it here with people who have Parkinson's disease. What we did was compare traditional exercise classes like those that are currently offered in the community for people with Parkinson's disease to learning to dance tango. So we had a group of people that we recruited and we assigned them to either learn tango or to do a, a traditional exercise class. We evaluated their walking and balance before they started the classes. Then they completed 20 classes. And at the end of the classes, we reevaluated their walking and balance. And then we could compare any changes that we saw between the two groups to determine which group, if either, resulted in improvements. And we found that the tango group improved far more than the traditional exercise group, particularly with respect to balance. We have several questions that we would like to answer now. One is, is there something particular about the tango that's important, or would dance in general be beneficial? Another is whether we need people to really dance over a long time period. The 20 lessons that they did in the initial study were completed over a course of 10 weeks. What we're doing right now is what we call dance boot camp, where we're having people dance every day for two weeks to see if we can get equivalent effects with a short duration intervention.